Hello my good friends, welcome back to the channel, always with Yun Sharperi in the series about Room Database for Android. In this video, I'm going to introduce the clean architecture patterns, specifically the use case pattern here in our application. Let's get started. So in the previous video, we saw we can use the repository with the view model and the database in order to achieve what we have achieved so far. In the previous video, we also introduced how we can work with health in order to provide the dependencies. Now we are going to move a little bit forward and see how we can use the use case patch. Now the clean architecture is defined by Anchor Bob. So concepts are pretty, well, not simple, but I will show you in a minute. Like here is this book. Now this book is amazing for that. Like it is the best book on clean architecture because it's the only book about that. But there is also other books on how to adapt clean architecture to Android to other places also. But this is the original book. Like you can get many ideas on the clean architecture here. So the idea of the clean architecture is to separate concepts. Like all the great architectures try to do that. But the way to do that is by following dependency rule. Like as you can see, everything is pointing in inward. So the database, external interfaces, device, UI, like this is the framework driver, should depend on the green thing here. Like this is the presenter controller gateway. In our thing, it might be like our view model. And those should depend on the use cases. And the use cases should depend on the entities, which are the domain models, which are also enterprise business rules. We are using the view model to access directly the word repository. And within that repository, we are using what we are using the database directly. So we are doing something wrong. So in order to achieve this principle here, what we simply will have to do is to invert the dependencies. Like this is the dependency inversion rule. So in order to achieve that, like in this example, it's pretty simple, but for bigger project, it will make a lot of sense, especially if this project will change a lot. So what do I mean by change? Like, let's say you are working with the room database and we will have to change it to another type of database. Now, this kind of thing won't happen every day, of course, but what the clean architecture aims to do is to prevent the changes from the database to reflect on other parts. Here is the rule. If you decided to change room database for another type of database, realm database, for example, delight or anything else, we shouldn't modify other parts like the UI, for example, or the business logic, because that shouldn't depend on each other. If you had to change the database here, well, this won't change. As you can see, the main view model, it is protected by using this repository, but this repository will have to change because we are using directly this word DAO, which is an interface, of course, but it is using this thing like this framework thing. So in order to do that, we'll simply invert the dependency. How? Simply by creating an interface. I don't know how I will structure that, so I will just do that here. I, let me do that here. Here in the data, I will create something called word data source. So this data source, I will make it as an interface. So this will depend on the business logic and everything, because we need to know if you will have a remote data source, a local data source, I don't know other type of data sources. So I will make it cache yeah, cache or local data source, word local data source. If you are in the future, we need like another type of data source, like remote data source, we can create it. Here for this one, I need only two simple methods. I need a function to get me all the words. I will keep it pretty simple. I will just return a list. I won't depend on any framework things. Like we can depend, like here we can use the flow. It won't be a problem because the flow is a platform thing. For example, it's the same as using string. Like you can't say to yourself, I'm not going to use a string because this kind of thing are a little bit stable. Or you can use directly a suspend function with that. And here we are going also to use the word. Now this might be a problem because we need a pure domain model to use it with those domain things. Because this word local data source is a domain thing. Now here we are going to implement this data source. Now keep in mind that this implementation will be specific to the room. So I will name it room word data source, for example. And I will just implement all the methods using what? Using that DAO that comes from room. Okay, so I will just use just word sorry, DAO, like the following. And here I'm going to use the DAO like that, it has to be private and file. And I'm going to use the DAO to get all the words. I will just return, this is simple logic. Same thing here, I will just insert a word and it must be word. Now this is suspendable, so I have to make this also as a suspendable function, like following. And yeah, override the suspendable function. So yes, yeah, so I will have to also to change the type of the declaration above. So that's it for creating this one. Now the repository should depend on this one and should not depend on the DAO itself. Let's go back to the repository here. And instead of using the DAO, we are going to use what? 
word local data source. Sometimes the repository can combine multiple things like the word local data source, the word remote data source, and so on. Let's just name it to local data source. And using that data source, we can do the insert and the thing. Now, keep in mind that, well, we didn't change a lot of things here, but let's say, as you can see, we have a problem. We don't know how to get this word local data source yet. But in the future, if you decided to remove the group database with another database, what we will do, simply we will go to this one and implement it using another database. And we will have to delete only this room word data source. This is it, we are protecting ourselves from this database like the room database. So let me go back here. What you need to do now is to provide this room data source. I will just do it here in the DI with the room module, of course. So what I will do, I will do that provide, normal provide, and function provide what the room, well, we can put it here or we can create a separate package for the data sources, but I will just put it here. So I will provide local word data source. I will use the exact abstract thing. And here I will give the implementation, which is the room data source like following. And here I have to provide the word DO, so I have to put it here. Word DAO, Word DAO. And now the repository, we know how to get it. The repository, as you can see, we know how to get this one and we are using it. So if you decided to remove the room database for another database, what we will simply do, we will modify this. And the database or the Word repository won't change at all. Well, we will have to change it if we decided to change like other methods here, for example, or let's say other features for the repository, but we are excluding and preventing modification for the database itself to reflect on the repository here. That's it. What you can do now is, let's say we want also to unit test this word repository. Well, you can provide a fake one here if you want so, because you are just providing this word local data source. You can provide it with a fake local data source. That would work also. Last part is when you use this word repository within the view model. Now, keep in mind that our uses here are pretty simple. We are not using something complicated, but for bigger projects, you will have to use or combine multiple repositories in order to achieve one business requirement. What you have to do, like in the clean architecture, like the access is to abstract this business thing, like combining word repository into one single class that we do all the job for you. Like here in the example, it's not shown, but I've seen that in bigger projects. So what you have to do is create a package. Well, I'm just pushing everything in one single package, but you get the idea. I have to create a package called use cases. And you think about use cases as use as business use cases, as real business use cases. So business will make a requirement that, hey, I want to add words into the database. He won't say database, he won't say room, but he will say, I want to save the word into the device. That's the business requirement. Now, when it comes to developer, we need to change it like it will be on the database, of course. It won't be on the device just like that. So what you have to do is create a use case called add word to device. This is the use case itself. And here, what you have to do, usually I name my use cases as UC or use case, something like that. And here, what I will do, well, simply I will do the inject and the constructor, and I will provide what all the required repositories in order to implement that business use case. So I will do private file here and do like my word repository. So here in that use case, I will put all the repositories that I need in order to implement that business use case. Now, we won't touch any data source directly, like data source should be managed by repositories and the repositories can be used inside this thing. Now, what I usually do is like the following. I will do the suspend func. I will do something called operator in order to use the invoke function like that. And here, what I will do simply is the following. I will just call the word repository in order to insert the word. Now I need the word, of course, so I will have to push it from that and you are ready to go. As I said, in a real project, this word should be different from this word because it uses like entity and everything. That way we are creating use case. Now, using that use case, what we will have to do is to push it here inside this one. We'll do private val and my use case. That simple, we'll know how to provide it. Now, why we don't want to use this repository directly in the main view model? As I said, because sometimes we have to combine multiple repositories. And of course, if this repository contains many functions, now that would be a problem. Why? Because we are giving too much information and too much access to that view model. 
what you'll have to do is to constrain the access of that view model to specifically do the things required by the business. That way, what we have to do is to replace it like following add use case using that invoke, I can do word object like that. And basically I can align everything here. That's for the first use case. The second use case will simply will have to return things. So I will just create it. Let me just duplicate it here, call like the business owner. We say, hey, I need to display all the use cases from that device. So you create a case called something, get all the words in like the device use case. That's one part. What you have to do here, simply you have to use this use case in order to get all the words and well, have to return it like following and well, you have to delete that. You don't need it anymore. And in the view model, well, you have to use that use case, of course, private val get all word use case like that and use it like the following. Okay, now there is problem here. Of course, this don't require any word and everything is ready to go. So we can delete this one. So what we did exactly, we created use cases in order to let the view model have specific access on the operations that the business needs. So if you read the view model, you will know that view model will get all the word from the device and just add simple word to the device. Now, if you run this, everything will go fine, hopefully. Of course, now let's, let me just see the database before and after. As you can see, we have six words here. And if I just add another word, let's call it Hola mi amigo. This isn't a word, but let's insert it and refresh you will see it is working. And this is how you can implement partially some parts of the clean architecture into your app using like room or anything else. So to recap, the main idea is to exclude the things that change a lot and to give specific access to the presenters or the view models here. So this view model will have the use cases in order to achieve specific business needs. Using those use cases, we are getting our repository. As we said, with use cases, you can combine multiple repositories to achieve a business need. And that way you can hide all the logic, all the business logic directly in the use cases. Like these use cases are pretty simple, but this is just a demonstration. So using those repository, we can get specific Specific methods. As I said, every use case should contain one method that's rule. And within the repository, we should like use or depend on abstract things. Why? Because with abstract thing, we can implement like multiple data sources with room, with other, like for example, file thing, shared preferences, and everything. And if we change that, we won't have to change. Let's say we have to change it the room for, to another database. We won't touch that. We won't touch any view model or any use case because everything is abstract and everything is pointing to the direction of the domain things or the entities because everything is pointing inwards. And the only place we need to change, like we have to implement this data source with another implementation. And of course, we have to replace this usage with the new implementation. So this may be a little bit of work. Of course, it's a little bit of work, but this would work specifically in bigger projects. If you have a simple project like this Word app, you don't have to do it. And especially if you know that, for example, the database won't change at least in five years or something, well, you can use it directly and you don't have to put all the hard work here, like the data source and everything. So that's it for this video. I hope you get an idea on how to implement partially something from the clean architecture into your application using Room or any other Thanks. So thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.